the truth about marriage, divorce, side and does money, black women, throw that in there. Yep, black women. And does money actually fix relationships? We going to have a conversation tonight. And I want to kind of give you some insight based off a of real life experience, based off of what it is that I see when I communicate with people that I coach on a regular basis um, and what's happening out in these streets. Contrary to popular belief, I'm out in the streets every single day. For those of you that ran into me out here in these streets today, uh, people pulled up on me in their cars. What up, though? I see you in the pickup truck, the F-150 Raptor. It was dope. Um, some of y'all seen me on the queue line. Some of y'all seen me at the baseball game early this morning. We had a 110 baseball game. Uh, early this morning, I'm going to be reading Super Chats throughout the show, so we're going to cook on that. Um, shout out to PLGQ Apparel. Go ahead and get this hat from them. That's right there. Uh, but let's have a conversation about the truth about marriage, because a lot of people don't truly understand it, including women. Women don't understand it. Men are fearful of it, and with good reason, right? Women have been sold a fairy tale their entire lives and that they think that marriage is something that you aspire to based off of how they feel in a Disney movie. Fair enough, because that's the way you've been indoctrinated your whole life. Uh, you've seen your father and your mother, and you've seen your father simp out for your mother, and so that's exactly what you expect for your husband to do. Future husband, if you can find one. Um, men are understandably uh, simping, and the other half of them are actually fearful of marriage. Some of them have no reason to fear marriage, because some of them don't have anything to actually take. Um, they should probably be more fearful of having a child out of wedlock because you're definitely going to be on child support for the rest of your life. And you're going to be tied to that, to that mother, that single baby mother, as though you was married to her. Think about it. You have a child out of wedlock. <sighs> Let me take my time here. You're more fearful of marriage than you are of having a child out of wedlock. Dummy. It's dumb. You're willing to put your in a hole and have a child with her and then be put on child support and have her leverage your child against you in family court than you are of getting married and you don't even have assets and resources to take. Tell me how backward that is. Now, it's a strong possibility that you don't even understand marriage and what it comes with. I did a review earlier this week and I broke down uh, a woman, which she was incredibly respectful. So I got to give her a lot of uh, a lot of love. I broke down a woman's view of saying that a high value man is overrated. And I'm going to give you the game and I'm going to break that down and I'm going to help you all to understand the difference because I do want you all to be successful. I do want you to be successfully married if you decide that that's the road that you want to go to. But it's some harsh truths that need to come along with that. And a lot of people truly don't understand it. Some of y'all get married out of obligation. You feel like you've been with the woman too long. And so as a result, a lot of people start to put pressure on you and say, why are you wasting their time? With good reason. Because why are you taking the best years of her life if you don't have any intention of being with her long term? Now, she has to be responsible and held accountable for the fact that she's still with you. But the reality is that everybody that's in that relationship needs to be accountable for their actions. Fair enough. Some people feel compelled to leave their relationship if somebody cheats. Cheating largely is not enough of a reason for you to break up your family if you have kids, because you have to think about the kids, the repercussions that come along with them being raised in separate households, especially considering that women largely are the ones that suffer as a result of divorce, whether you like it or not. I don't know what Beyonce told you. I don't give a about re what, re what Sierra said. Uh, the reality is that y'all going to be out here suffering as a result of the divorce. And so we're going to break this down. We're going to go into it. We're going to deep dive into it. Make sure you hit a like for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. If you have questions for me, save them to the end. I will drop the link in the chat and I will allow for you guys to be able to come up on the panel and then ask me those questions. Now, here's the thing. Let's start off with the most uh, juicy part of the conversation, side holes. What women don't understand and I'm going to get to the side dudes, too, so don't think that y'all absolved. What women don't understand about side chicks is that there's really only three categories of people, right? 
you have men and men are inherently going to be men. You have wives and then you have side chicks. OK, let me let me restate that for you all so that you all better understand. You have men. Wives and side chicks. That's it. That's as easy and as simple as it gets. There are no other categories unless you want to revise, you know, you want to go into the alphabet community. I'm just going to make an assumption that everybody is not gay, that everybody here that's paying attention to what it is that we saying today is heterosexual. It's only those three categories. All right. And so everybody has a role to play. The problem then per, then comes out when everybody steps outside of their role. Hoes know they hoes, and it doesn't matter how much they aspire to be married. They know inherently who they are. Wives know what they're supposed to be, but then they get envious of the hoes because they so busy focused on the fact that the hoes are the one that's getting all of the dates. And the problem with women is that they're emotional, and so they can't really understand and pay attention to how it is that they're supposed to be moving because they're so busy focused on what everybody else is doing. Right. If you are the type of woman that's a wife. Hear me clearly. If you are the type of woman that is a wife, you are not going to get all of the attention from all of the guys that's looking to fuck you. You're not supposed to. Right. You're supposed to be held to a higher standard. That's why people were so upset when you seen Aisha Curry uh, a couple years ago pining for and looking for attention from people, even though she's a married woman and she's supposed to be looked at and heralded differently. You're held to a different standard. You're not supposed to be like a hoe for the street. I don't ever want to be looked at like a drug dealer. I'm not interested in the type of attention that drug dealers attract. It is negative attention. It does not serve me. And you need to, as a wife or as a woman that is a potential wife, withhold yourself from being for the streets. There is nothing out there for you. But what they do is that they look at all of the women that are for the streets, got all of the BBLs, got their ass out, is in a club shaking, pouring champagne on themselves and taking all of the D, getting trains ran on them. And then they look at them with some sort of envy, with some sort of admonition, with some sort of want to be wanted in the same way that they are wanted, not understanding what these hoes is going through. Because, again, there is a difference between a wife and a hoe. You need to be able to separate the two. The problem with men is that they don't understand how to separate the two. And they often at times try to turn a hoe into a wife, not knowing that that hoe is going to be the worst thing that ever happened to them. And then they get mad at the idea that they weren't able to able to truly find a wife because she was never a wife to begin with.